Hello everybody, it's Bottle Rich here, Bottle Finds 85. My last Bottle Finds uh, video was Record Store Day. I bought six Record Store Day albums. And uh, like Tone Scott said, you know, it was kind of a sticker shock for me, the amount. But I did put, you know, had them put them back behind the counter and I did go looking through the store, but I really didn't want to spend any more money, and it's kind of a shame, you know. But anyways, one of the six was The End, a band that was produced by Bill Wyman. Introspection. Fantastic 60s side. This is, I had heard it online. I had never, I hadn't heard any of the albums when I uh, made the video, but this sounds fantastic. As does the second record of unreleased stuff. Um, and it's called The Retrospection. Highly recommend this album. Double album. <clears throat> the End. Now, when uh, on rec when I made my list for Record Store Day, there were two 60s that kind of caught my eye. This one, thanks to the Hogs Air Report. And the David Axelrod. Now, upon hearing the David Axelrod, I decided against getting that album. I just didn't like it. Um, I found the horn arrangements atrocious. And beyond that, though, there's something missing. And what it is, is this album here, psychedelic music played by stoners. Heads. You know? And uh, that type of music... It, Kids that dropped acid or smoked weed, they played it. They just did a better job at making this kind of music. And that David Axelrod one, you could tell, was session musicians. Now, they might be better musicians, but it just didn't, it just doesn't feel as natural as the end one. Now, that said, I did pick up this one, The Open Mind. This one uh, flew right over my radar. 60s psych band. I uh, English psych band. I I wasn't familiar with who the open went the open mind. Did I just say the open road? The open mind is the name of the band. But upon listening to this, I do have some of these songs on some CD uh, psych CD psych uh, comps. And uh, this is a cool album. It's I I really like this album. It's not as good as this one though. And uh, the, the thing that's weird on this is some of the vocals are really weird. There's one guy that sings real high, and it kind of freaks me out. But uh, the first 500, I got 146 out of 1500. The first 500 supposedly come with this seven inch, which is pretty cool. Magic Potion, The Open Mind. And it's a four song EP, actually. A good shot of the band. I don't know if I should show this, but I will. Pretty plain labels. Um, but yeah, I, I, I really dig this one. Um, the Open Mind. So I ended up with two 60s. Record Store Day records after all. It came with this little poster, which for me is pretty useless, but it is what it is. The album is a, a black vinyl, and it has these pretty plain 60s looking import labels, you know. That looks like a UK label from the 60s. You know. Really nice sleeve, and it came with a really nice book. It's on Sunbeam Records. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's got pictures, a little history. This is a pretty cool poster here. But yeah, I dig it. That's my new record store day purchase. I did buy another record store day 
I got two from uh, Bull Moose, but it's not a 60s, and this is going to be all 60s stuff. I'll show that one in my next video. Um, I guess Bull Moose, the Monday after Record Store Day, all the items that they don't sell, they put on online at 7 in the morning. 7 in the morning, I went online, and I picked this one up, that open mind one up for, I think it was 30 Maybe thirty-one dollars, something like that. And the other one I got for was under twenty, so not not bad prices at all. Now to the regular purchases. We got the Yardbirds for your love. This is a German copy on Outline Records, whatever that means. I don't know. Um, this will probably be the last Yardbirds album I really need. I think I have three other albums now. This is a. The Jeff Beck lineup. Uh, Eric Clapton does play on For Your Love on that middle section of the song. You know how like the song starts off with the piano or the harpsichord? And uh, supposedly, well, what I've read is that's the reason Eric Clapton left the Yardbirds is because of the song For Your Love. He thought it was too commercial. It wasn't bluesy enough or whatever it was just you know he felt it was a two of a commercial of a direction for the yardbirds and he quit the band and it's kind of ironic man considering what eric clapton turned into i mean god he turned into a talk about mediocre commercial music but of all these albums i'm going to show this is probably the one i played the most it's really good i dig it i wish you woods on here Good Morning Little School Girls. They do a great version of that song. But yeah, fantastic. Yardbirds. And this is what the label looks like. I don't know when this was pressed at all. It doesn't really matter. Because it's in great shape. Now this next one. I don't know if it's a grill or not. People would seem to think it is. It's an album I don't really care for, but I had to get it. It's Trout Mask Replica by Captain Beefheart and his Magic Band. A giant hole in my Captain Beefheart collection. Yeah, what a fantastic gatefold. I hope you can see that. Yeah, fantastic album cover. Um... I haven't played it yet. It's going to take me a while to get into this. It's not my favorite Captain Beefheart album. In fact, I've ragged on it. But I had to get this. This is on straight records. So it, the cover's in, I would say, very good plus. It has a little ring wear here and a sticker here I'll take off. It comes with these sleeves, these bizarre straight sleeves. And the straight record labels. Fantastic, you know. I could, I, for the price, I had to get it. And hopefully I'll get into the record. You know, I, I dig Captain Beefheart. And I think... Counting Mirror, man, I think there's only three that I don't have by him. Now these next two, I'm going to kind of show them together. We got Syndicate of Sound with their the song I knew was Little Girl. Really cool garage rocky song. And then we got the Buckinghams. Kind of a drag. A kind of it's a sixties song that I really wasn't into. I didn't consider it to be a really rocker. It was more of a I don't know. I just you know but I picked it up. I knew this song and I really liked this song, so I figured this is going to be a better album than this one. And I actually like this album better. It's really not what I expected. It's kind of off kilter. I mean, it's fantastic, actually. I, I really dig this album. It's been a while since I've heard it, but it, it's not, it, it, it was very unexpected, the sound of it. Now, this isn't a bad album, though. But I think Little Girl is probably the 
best song. There's some other good songs on here. A couple of wanker ones. Each seems like each side has a wanker song. But yeah, this is a good album. I just thought I would like that one a lot more than I did the Buckingham. So I was wrong, and this is on Bell Records. Little girl. Really cool addition. And this one here, I was really surprised. And this one's on USA Records, I think out of Chicago. Now the next one, another 60s. I'm not sure if this is a band or these are studio guys. It kind of sounds like studio guys. It's the id... The Inner Sounds of the Id. By the Id. And, see, these guys look kind of square, you know? They don't look like they were dropping acid. But you, you never knew back then, dude. You never knew. Back when I was in high school, in Bakersfield, there was actually cowboys, you know? Guys that came with hats. And I got to know one of them, and he was an acid head. But anyways... This is a weird album, man. It has some really weird stuff on it. I mean, it starts off with a song called The Rake. The Rake. The Rake. It's, I mean, it's really weird. And it kind of doesn't really go anywhere, but it's fucking weird. The next song is Wild Times. I really dig that one. But, uh, and then the last song on side two is like a ten and a half minute song called The Inner Sound of the Id. Yeah, this is a really weird Boil the Kettle Mother. It's got some really weird songs on it. It does not sound like these guys look at all. I don't know if you can see that. But yeah, this is a really weird album. Really psyche stuff. And even really crazy stuff. It sounds really weird. It's a, it's a good album, man. If you like that 60s weirdness. And it's on RCA. And this is the sleeve. I'm presuming this is the original inner sleeve. It looks like it by the records they're advertising here. How Hurt, Pink Panther. Some pretty square shit. Which I'm not, you know, I'm not capping on it. Chet Atkins. Yeah, this Hank Snow. It's like, these albums do not sound anything like the id. Now this next one, I bought from Bomp Records. Do my Bomp plug. Dead Wax 66 showed this, and he said he picked it up for ten dollars. I immediately went there. Said so for ten bucks, you know, it's a double album. Apparently, when this thing first came out, it was I don't know forty bucks or so. Bomp was selling it for th uh, ten bucks. The Glass Family. The Electric Band is the name of the album. Um, first song, House of Glass, is really a... It's a good psych song. But it, it has like... It does have an organ in it. And it gives it this kind of an eerie heaviness to it. That most psych... It's not that light, whimsical psych at all. And then, most of the songs after that... I don't even know if I would really even call them psych. They're more... Almost getting into that 70s sound. The This album was released and record, recorded and released in 1968. Now, the second disc was recorded in 1967. And it was their first attempt at the record. They handed it in and the record company rejected it. So they went back in the studio. Recorded all new songs. And uh, I guess... And they're d totally different songs. Now, I haven't heard the second record, so I don't know what that one sounds like, actually. It might be more psyched than this one. But, uh, yeah. Go to Bomp. If it's still there for 10 bucks, I hi highly recommend it. And the label is on this very plain green label on May Maplewood Records. The other label is the same, but just a different color. And since I 
was buying that album for 10 I went and I got a couple of comps. I got this one, the Rembrandt Record Story, Open Up Your Mind, 1966 to 1967. Rembrandt Records was a record label in Chicago. And this is fantastic, dude. This is... A lot of these songs are really, really deep psych. And, uh... Oh, okay, I pulled it out. And this one came with a... This is the one that's first 500 came with a single. I don't know if... I might have misspoke on that other one that came with a single. And this is a single of the Night Owls. I think this was actually the first single ever released on Rembrandt. Something You Got and Ooh, Poop Pop Do. Yeah, I really dig it. Yikes. And this one came with us. Insert, Open Up Your Mind, 1966-67, Rembrandt Record Story. Very cool. Highly recommended. This is the the label on some of their original 45s. Very cool label. Rembrandt Record Story. Highly recommend that if you're into psych. And I got one more. Sick and tired. Highly recommend this if you're into garage. That's not how oct high octane revival would call it. That snotty gritty sound. Yeah, really cool. And it comes with this very simple insert. Little info on the bands. But yeah, very cool. I can't get enough of this stuff. Sick and tired. In the vein of, uh, it came from the garage. Ah, whatever, you know what I mean. Love it. What's that? That's my 60s. I probably have enough almost for another video. Not quite. I'll probably be a week or two before I make another vinyl finds. I should say record finds. The Metal Theologian mentioned this. I think on his maybe last video or two videos ago. He goes, you know, why do we even call it vinyl, you know? We never called it vinyl. We've called it records. Hey, you want to come over to the house and listen to some records? Anyway, take care. Record Richie here.